For those of you who don't know me, my name is Julian, one of the nation's top solar consultants, and today I'm going to be just explaining net metering because it's one of the most important concepts to understand if you're looking at going solar. Most people are usually pretty concerned about like which panels they get, and yes, very important, you want good panels, but you really need to understand the relationship with the utility company because every utility company has a different net metering agreement, and so looking yours up is super important. Currently, right now, if you don't have any solar on your house, your relationship with the, the utility company is simple. You're a customer, you only ever buy power. But when you go solar, there's actually times when you're producing more than your home is consuming. And so that power is actually going back out to the grid. And so sometimes you're actually selling power to the grid. And so your relationship kind of changes from a customer to an energy producing partner. The best net metering agreement that you can have, it's still offered a lot throughout the country. There are certain areas. Ideally, you want a one-to-one -one net metering agreement. So what that means is basically, so I'll break down the graph real fast. So basically the red line is a home a home's usage throughout the day. So it starts at midnight, ends at midnight. So basically you use a little bit of power throughout the night. People wake up, you know, they, they're cooking breakfast, they have their lights on, they're using the bathroom and everything. Then usually there's a dip, people go to work, um, you, you know, people aren't really in the house as much. And then in the evening time, people come back, they're cooking dinner, kids are back from school, you know, etc. right? There's lots of stuff going on in the house in the evening time, everyone's home. And then again, it will kind of, uh, you wind down and, uh, you know, you don't have much power uh, being used throughout the night. But the green line is the solar production. And as you see, we kind of have a problem. The production is not really happening during the time of the usage. And so net metering solves this problem. And so basically any time uh, when the green line is above the red line, that power is excess and it goes back to the grid. The utility company buys it from you. And then you do pull power from the grid in the evening time and in the middle of the night, but the credits just pay for it. It zeroes each other out and you're good to go. You don't need a battery. Solar itself solves your problem. Some of the best places with one-to-one -one net metering agreements are Texas and Florida. Now, not every utility company in these states offer one-to-one -one net metering, but a lot of them do. So if, you, if you're in Florida or Texas, Virginia, North or South Carolina, Pennsylvania, a lot of the East Coast uh, states have really generous one-to-one -one net metering agreement. Now, there are a lot of markets with utility companies that don't exactly offer uh, very good net metering, California being 50% of the nation's solar market, and they just pretty much slashed, slashed the net metering incentives. Now, net metering isn't everything. A good net metering program will help the payback period go down, but uh, in California, for example, it still makes sense, it's just not as good. So in the scenario where the utility company is not offering one-to-one -one net metering, the system is actually gonna look a little bit more like this. Okay, so bear with me here. I know this is a little bit more of a complex chart here, but I'm gonna explain it to you. So if the utility company is not going to really give you what the power is worth, like let's say they just wanna give you cents on the dollar for what the power is worth, like in California, for example, Instead of giving all the power back to the grid, like in the first example, now we're gonna to want to have a battery to capture that excess storage. So, same, same, uh, and just like in the other graph, the red line is the home energies, uh, the home's usage, and then the green is the energy production, but what's new is the blue. And so what the blue is, is it represents either the battery getting charged, which down here you see uh, it's actually in the negative, so the home is actually consuming negative power, the, 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 uh, the battery is not discharging, it's, it's charging up, so we're gonna take this power up here and instead of giving it to the grid, it's gonna go into the battery. And then in the evening time, as the solar production dips below what the home needs, the battery will then supplement what the solar is giving the home to power the house up until the point when the sun totally sets and now like as right here, for example, you're completely using the battery. Now, the amount of batteries you have is going to determine how late through the night you're actually going to be able to use your batteries before you're back on the grid power. So in this example, I actually left a, a, a time, probably a 2 a.m. or so, I didn't, it doesn't matter, but sometime in the middle of the night here, the battery is gonna essentially die. 
and you're going to be on grid power again until we get to the point in the daytime where we have excess again to charge the battery. So when designing the system, uh, there's all these different softwares that can calculate, the, and they're all improving it drastically because this whole net metering 3.0 in California is brand new, but we're going to be figuring out and analyzing how much basically leftover power from the grid you need um, combined with the cost of more batteries, of course, is going to give you the best ROI. In California, we're actually still modeling out these systems, sometimes to see as low as around eight years, which is still better than the majority of the country. So even though California has not great net metering anymore, because the rates from the utility companies are some of the highest in the entire country, the solar going solar still makes sense and saves you money. In some other states with not the greatest net metering, but expensive utility rates, which are causing the solar investment to still make a lot of sense, is obviously California, uh, Nevada and Arizona, Colorado. Uh, these are some other states that are, you know, solar has a relatively quick payback period, even if the utility companies are not buying your power back at full retail. I hope you learned something. If you would like to work with me, I would love to help you go solar. Once again, my name is Julian Todd Borden and my cell phone number is 760-473-5878.